Hey everyone, Paul here, also known as PLASK, with a brand new course on how to use Ableton's Simpler instrument. Now the great thing about Simpler is that no matter which version of Ableton Live you're using, whether it's intro, standard, or suite, you have access to this device. This instrument is really fantastic. It borrows from some of the old school sampling techniques from hardware, things like the Emu Emulator series and the Akai S series of samplers. And it allows us to take audio samples and manipulate them in different ways. It gives us several different playback modes as we'll explore. And then before the end of the series, we'll look at some techniques for resynthesis, how to take existing audio samples and kind of modify and morph them into something completely different. So I'm really looking forward to presenting this course to you. Get right into it. To kick things off, we're just going to do a quick shotgun run through the features of Simpler and overview of the interface. So Simpler can be found over here in the browser if you go to Instruments, Simpler right here, and we're going to drag and drop it onto a MIDI track. Because it is an instrument, it needs to be loaded onto a MIDI track. But if you put it on a MIDI track and you record arm said MIDI track and you start hitting some keys on your MIDI controller, you're not going to hear anything. Simpler on its own doesn't generate any sound. so. It's a sample playback device. The only way it's going to play back sounds is if we load samples into it, and then it will use the samples as the source for the sound. Now, if you're familiar with synthesis, uh, subtractive synthesis in particular, there are going to be a few things on Simpler that look fairly familiar. You see some of them down here. You see a filter section down here. We see an amp envelope down here, attack, decay, sustain, release. If we click on the controls tab, this is going to give us those features in a little bit more detail. So we can see the filter here, and if we start to make changes to it, we get a nice visual representation of the filter and the audible frequency spectrum. We have an LFO built in in the middle here, which we can use for modulation. And then here's our amplitude envelope over here. Now, as I mentioned, we have these two tabs, sample and controls. We can toggle between viewing the sample and making some edits to start points and end points and things like that. Controls is going to give us more of the, the synthesizer controls. You can think of it like that. But if I do load a sample into this, let's just take one of these samples I've got up here. So if I load a sample in and we see the sample in there, you'll notice that in the sample window, this little disclosure arrow pops up over here on the top left corner. And if we click that, we can see the sample window expands out above the control window so we can see everything all at once. Sample window up here. Controls window down here. Let's just take a quick look at some of the kind of hidden panels in the controls window. So um, I mentioned the filter section. You can see it says frequency down here on the lower left-hand corner of the filter. Just to the right of that is a button that says envelope. And if I click that, we have a built-in filter envelope. And again, if you know anything about subtractive synthesis, this will probably be fairly familiar. We'll get into this when we get into our sound design portion of the lesson later on. Uh, and then over here in the amplitude envelope area, there's actually another button over here that says pitch. And if we click that, we have a little hidden pitch envelope, which we can use to modulate the pitch of the sound over time. I'm going to go back to the amplitude envelope. Down here at the bottom of the amp envelope section, we have a few additional synthesis parameters. Um, we have the ability to pan. We can randomize the panning. We can transpose in sense and semitones from here and here. We can also use a little bit of portamento or glide and we have the ability to spread the sound to make it wider in the stereo field to allow velocity to control volume if you want some sort of velocity sensitivity to control the volume and um, we have some similar features over here you can see in the filter envelope we have a velocity parameter here which is going to basically use velocity to control the modulation depth of the filter envelope we have key tracking for the filter as well and then up here jumping back up to the sample window um, you can obviously see the sample once it's loaded in. It gives you a timeline along the bottom to see the duration of the sample. And then we have some controls down here for doing things like adjusting the gain of the sample if it's too quiet or too loud and we need to adjust it from there. We can do so. We can adjust the start point where the sample is starting playback from. You can do that in two ways. You can either do that by moving this start percentage here or just grabbing this little start marker flag and adjusting the position like so. You can do the same with the end point over here. Uh, we have a couple of loop controls, which we'll get into in a future lesson. Uh, polyphony setting, how many voices or how many notes can we play at a time. Uh, and then over here, we have the ability to warp, which we've got a whole video dedicated to that. So we'll get into that later. And I guess the last thing I'll point out while we're here looking at the sample window is we have these three buttons along the left hand side. If we're back in the default view here, you'll see them show up on the left kind of stacked vertically. Classic one shot and slice. 
These are different playback modes for how the sample will play back. And we're gonna go in detail into all of these, but I just wanted to kind of go through the overview here and point out the different buttons, the different hidden panels and things like that. We'll make use of all this stuff in a lot more detail as we move forward. But again, just be aware that Simpler needs to have a sample loaded into it, otherwise it won't make any sound. Now when I play keys on the keyboard, I can hear that sample play back, and as I play different notes on the keyboard, I can transpose that sample chromatically up or down based on the key that I'm playing. So in the next video, we'll, take, we'll start to take a look at these different playback modes and how they work and why you may want to use those. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.